see then that for example a new generation is actually ready to uh, try a different way of banking because of course we also saw Revolut uh, N26 going after the US market as well but it seems like quite an, a challenging market if I, if I listen to you well with sort of the differences state by state and indeed also these sort of really uh, uh, confined uh, uh, customer populations tied into uh, specific local brands. Yeah, I think so, and I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how those how those those challenger banks approach the market. So you, yeah, you're completely right. We've got Monzo, Revolu, N26, all targeting the market. I, I, I've, I've heard pre pre coronavirus that if you were in New York um, on the subway, you, you basically were just wall to wall N26 adverts at the time. And I think everyone's spending big bucks to to acquire that market and. It'll be interesting to see what, what what customers start to to use those services. Will it be initially migrants that want to access a financial service that, that can't maybe access a traditional banking product, um, or will they be able to really capitalise on on the market in general? Yeah, yeah, I'm really curious about as well how it will go. I think it's uh, I, I believe there's a lot of work to be done to uh, modernise uh, banking in the US. I mean, already if you think about uh, the payment fees that are common there and the, the, the transactional systems are just really old fashioned. Yeah, uh, and I think that's, an, that's another big difference, right? Like in, 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 the, the, in Europe, challenge banks focus primarily on traditional current accounts, right? They're not, they're not focusing on credit products. Whereas in the US, the majority of spending is, is on credit products. Uh, yep. People have credit cards, they use those credit cards, they accrue points and, and actually using a debit account for, for additional payment is, is pretty alien to a, to a US consumer. Yep. And, and that'll be a big, a big interesting um, challenge for those fintechs as well. No, uh, indeed, I think that's really interesting. And of course, the, the fees that, are, that can be earned there on payments are very different than they are from the European perspective. Yeah. I think people are actually used to pay money for doing transactions, uh, yeah. which is quite foreign to Europeans. <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah. Paying money for transactions, paying money for bank accounts, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, which, may, of course, makes an interesting growth market from that perspective uh, as well. And so if you would compare it then to the European market, uh, where you're also very active, right? So uh, how do you see then, I mean, is it much more challenging for you, uh, for Onfido to actually, to, or for Onfido to actually, uh, you know, cover the European market with all these different countries and, you know, different ways that they're dealing with regulations? Yeah, there's 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 certainly some harmonizing factors in, 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 in Europe. So the European Banking Association tends to try and harmonize rules across, across regulated um, markets. But... But, but you're completely right. We still see quite different regulation in, in, in different markets in, in relation to, to our services. So we look at very much at the point of onboarding for a customer and um, there, there tends to be two, two sort of